One thing people don't know is that I can't really see out of my right eye. I just easy against it. I think that's where I fell and hurt my eye. The muscle from my brain to my eye isn't actually connected, so it's just totally out of focus. It kind of means my peripheral vision is just a little off to the side. When I did start racing mountain bikes, I remember pretty well hitting a tree on that side, and I didn't see the tree. Yeah, I learned pretty quick after that to uh, give myself a bit of space on the right. <laughs> At a time and place where every minute detail of every race is analyzed and agonized over. In an era where access to an athlete's trials and tribulations has never been more transparent. There remains one subject that seemingly still remains out of bounds. How exactly do you determine a pro rider's worth? As a female racer, I've always wondered, like, is it kind of like the chicken or the egg? Is there less women because there's less support, or is there less support because there is less women? Because she's a woman, she's going to cost me half the price of a man. It's quite hard for me to hear this kind of stuff because we are just doing the same thing. We race on the same course, the same risks, the same struggles, the same training. You know, at the end of the day, racing is dangerous and it's not a career that lasts forever. I think we all know that any day that could be your last crash. You know, you might not be able to ride again or you might not be competitive again after that. It's only fair that they get their value in return. You know, you get these like little micro moments where you're kind of like, oh, f what am I doing? 29, I got no job security. I crash a lot. What's going on? but you just take like one second to think about it and you realize it's the coolest shit ever. Supply and demand. The idea that the price for a particular service varies until the quantity and demand equals the supply. The world of racing isn't immune to these basic economics. And here in the rarefied air of North Star, California, the slim supply of racers who can win a stop on the Enduro World Series has gone up by one. Round number seven sees the return of Martin Mays. Although the Belgian's dreams of an overall title have evaporated, the 22-year-old retains both the ability to reshuffle the leaderboard and the potential to affect the season's final tally. I'm probably a little bit more nervous to, um, than usual, but I've been riding my bike more than ever. I think those three months got me stronger. <laughs> This place is pretty alien to me, and I didn't have much time riding it, so if anyone knows how to sell up your bike for going faster, please let me know. <laughs> it's all about, you know, getting used to the terrain and to the dust, the extreme dust of the weekend. You're kind of like surfing around the, the trail a bit. You don't really know where you're going, but you're kind of like pointing in one direction. You're hoping your tires kind of hook up and, and get you on the right line. The amount of rocks, like, normally you'd look at me, but this is unrideable. And for some reason, you just point straight at them and ride over them. It's not. Smashed me wheels pretty good a couple times, so it's making me a little nervous. Straight away, your mouth's dry, you're out of breath, you're just body screaming at you straight out of the arcade. There's just no let up, especially with the altitude and the dust and everything. Like, you're just straight away gassed. Elevation is like, you think you can go for that 10 second sprint, but at like five seconds, your lungs start burning. That's pretty much what I feel like. I like don't want to think about it. I'm gonna only freak out like on Saturday after practice about how hard it's gonna to be to actually race those stages at the elevation that we're at. How was that one? Oh, it's hard. The altitude like hits you half the way down and you're not recovering as fast. <sighs> What determines a rider's worth? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, I'm trying to get a word. 
I don't know, it's a tough one. I've, I've always found it a bit strange that, uh, yeah, you know, salaries are not really something to get spoken about. I do think that this kind of culture maybe drives the value of riders down. Everyone has a reference price of what they think they're worth. But it's like a bit of a game of battleships. If they ask for too much, then the brand will just say no. But if they ask for too little, then the brand's getting a good deal. Probably because our sport's kind of new and companies might not see it as like this big flashy thing like it like downhill is. But yeah, I don't know. Mountain bike, there seems to be a shitload of mountain bikes being sold. <laughs> It's quite hard to say and claim, okay, this is my value, so if you want to have me on your bike, this is what you have to pay. I think a lot of things make a rider's worth. If you're winning, that's, you know, obviously there's value in that. No rider's the same, you know, it's not like, okay, this guy has a few top fives, a couple of podiums and a win. He's worth X. You also need to have a good image, you need to have a bit of a personality, you need to be good on social media. There's a lot of riders who have a huge social media following. There's a the fan favorite. I won't say lucky because it's not luck that gets you onto a pro team. I guess I don't get it sometimes when somebody's top 30 and it's hard to get a contract. There is a major swift right now in the industry and we tend like to pay women more, which is like very important. And when I first started, if you want a decent paycheck, you need a decent results to sort of back it up. Whereas now you see other riders, the way they market themselves on social media is quite important as well. Yeah, you have, to, you have to go things about a certain way now to, to have a value. Tough one, the Queen stage of the weekend, and I uh, feel like you're riding smooth. You just feel, I just feel like I was all over the place, and it's frustrating, but hopefully I went quick. You know, Sam's going fast, so, you know, I was right behind me yesterday, and I gotta stay on my game, especially on the downhilly stuff. I actually don't remember a time when I've been as nervous as I have been dropping into stage four today. You perch yourself up on that little start gate and it's just straight into Rocky Nair. And loads of people there watching. You've seen people get sketchy, you've seen people crash. So you know everything that can go wrong. And then you have to go do it yourself. Before crash, on that stage, happy to be back racing. Uh, I want to be winning. I'm not happy with a third or fourth place. Now, simple accounting shows that at this stage in the season, the top three men in the series are separated by only 200 points. Further math indicates that there's a maximum of 540 points on offer here in California. Points that have the potential to tip the scales in the season-long title hunt in favor of any of the top three. Well, save one. I over the bars and I've just done something. It's done a bit of damage to my hand or wrist. So. You mean I get it checked out, but I think it's uh, that's me out for the weekend. That's definitely hard coming in as the reigning champ, and you're the one with the target on your back. Lorraine's been super consistent this year. The altitude is not for me. Uh, my heart is really high. <laughs> I'm tired. This is not my weekend, I think. For me, it wasn't so much, I don't want to lose it, it's just I want to win and I want to be the best again. Hopefully these last rounds I can turn it around and, and get to where I want to be. Probably the loosest run that all weekend. Sam got me on the overall in the last one, so I was like, whatever, it's pin it, had some sketchy moments. I found it super hard because in one way I want to go fast and on the other way I'm really like, I just want the overall, you know? So I'm just gonna stay calm, not crash, and stop doing so many stupid mistakes. Yeah, one more to go, six, there's quite a lot in it, so there's quite a lot of time there to up for grabs. I'm looking forward to the last one, it's probably favorite stage of the weekend, so. I'll get it done. He's coming in hot. Make some noise, people. Richie Rude. All the power down, nothing to leave out. Coming across the line. Let's see if that was enough. You 
Sometimes the math is easy. With her seventh consecutive win this season, Isabeau Couturier secures her first Enduro World Series title at the penultimate stop. Other times, calculations can become more complicated. After 26 minutes of racing here in California, a scant 0.81 seconds separated first and second. Let that marinate for a moment. After the dust had literally settled and the overall points calculated, the series leaderboard has become a race fan's daydream. An entire season of racing will come down to Zermatt with a thousand possible permutations in play. I reckon you could increase your social media following or you could do a great job promoting your sponsor's products. But at the end of the day, the best thing a rider can do to increase their worth is to win races. Next on On Track. Florian's also been around quite a while. He's a great rider and he's shown this year that he's consistent on all the different terrain. I definitely still have a shot at winning this title. I know what I've got to do. Just got to go out there and do it, really.